I had planned to abuse my privilege here to ask the first questions. question. I will not do it because the time is rather advanced. Uh, we have 15 more minutes uh, or should we? Uh, it's just simply to know. Five more minutes to go. So directly the audience, I ask you for uh, observations or commentary. Thank you very much for the possibility. I think the title of this panel is multi Multiculturalism in Europe. I think uh, I want to say uh, quite friendly and not as a criticism, I want to add we didn't speak about Europe. We spoke about this corner of Europe and sometimes I had the impressions that Great, Euro uh, Great Britain is Europe. I would be happy if it was, uh, would work in such direction. I think concerning multiculturalism, it's not only Islam. I think we have a lot of migration creating a different cultural situation. And what we forgot, if we are speaking about Islam, that we had an autochton Islam in Bosnia since centuries. And I think what has happened also by the Europeans, uh, that the, the Bosniak community, which had some historical connections, being very much, uh, uh, may I say, secularized, uh, but existing, was totally forgotten. And I think here are really important developments because here, also coming out of the Islamic corner, I think because I saw the royal family was get to rid of the Wahhabis, we are getting a certain influence here. For example, the uh, Islamic teachers uh, for Austria are educated by Wahhabis in Bosnia and in Sanjak. Huh? Uh, and it's getting a certain influence. And if you are looking to investment on mosques and so on and so on, even in so-called Islamic countries like the Albanians, which are first Albanians, second Albanians, and Shkipetas at last, but not very Muslims, they are getting as a gift a lot of mosques. You know? There's a nice name, for example, for the mosques in, in Albania, the so-called Berisha rockets by the minarets, uh, and so on and so on. I think if we are discussing it under this theme, we should look a little bit wider. I think it is a little bit too much focused, first of all, on this corner of Europe, and second, only on Islam. Multiculturalism is a little bit broader. Okay. Um, I take other interventions here. Please, uh, you hand the mic. Here. Uh, one comment toward uh, Mr. Paul Schaeffer. Um, you said we should uh, b focus more on the community and less on the in individual interest, uh, as far as I, can, uh, I understood in the multiculturalist uh, uh, discussion. Uh, or uh, rather become a community of communities rather than a community of individuals. Um, what, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I wonder... I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, when, uh, if those uh, community rights, community interests, conflict between legally uh, democratically decided upon individual rights uh, and there's a discrepancy which arguably is, might happen. Uh, what is your position then in that case? You want to respond to that directly, Paul? Because that was a question to you. Yep, definitely. Um, no, I was trying to summarize what multiculturalism historically is that is to say, an emphasis on community rather than the individual, and an idea of a cultural legacy that is transmitted from one generation to the other. If you take those two elements away from an idea of multiculturalism, and I know that under the banner of multiculturalism you can find numerous um, approaches, but if you take those two elements away, I think you're left with an empty shell. So in that sense, uh, I was critical on empirical grounds because I don't see that generational transfer of legacy. I don't think ethnicity is very pertinent. 
I think religion is pertinent, and we will see the development of a Muslim community, communities, but ethnicity understood at transferring, for example, that the Turkish language and certain customs and uh, culture is transferred <coughs> from the parents to the children to the grandchildren. I simply don't see it in that way. On the contrary, what I see is generational conflict and the great difficulty of many parents to raise children in an environment that is in many ways difficult for them to fathom. And so if this mother to whom I referred says to me, I'm losing my children, that is exactly the opposite of the idea of a transfer of a leg legacy that is undisturbed from one generation to the other. So the empirical grounds are disputable, and I said something, I guess, to the more normative side of it. So in that sense, um, but I wouldn't s supplant this by arguing, for example, like what happened in Britain or um, in France, to start on a governmental level a discussion about Britishness or French identity. I think that's a completely the wrong approach. If you politicize it that way, you know, there are so many arenas in which what I describe as the imagined community really is formed. For example, in the Netherlands we now have a monument commemorating slavery, a private initiative. That, those are the sort of things, you know, rewriting uh, a history where uh, forgotten elements of a colonial history find a place in the public uh, sphere. That is an example. New rituals like naturalization, where you can do that in many different ways. So I think all these discussions, governmental discussions about Britishness or Frenchness, have produced the opposite. Instead of trust, they have created an atmosphere of distrust. Perhaps one. Yeah. Ingvild Plasner from the Norwegian Center for Human Rights. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask you if we have the time for a brief comment regarding the uh, appearance of unintended consequences when we try to, or we, some of us, some countries try to develop a sense of we, uh, and uh, it's defined maybe sometimes too narrow so that there would be consequences where individual would react upon that and would become more radical, or where the consequence would be that, the, for instance, school children, if they are prohibited from wearing the hijab, they would, as a consequence, at least in France, actually uh, uh, be referred to private religious schools, which is maybe not so helpful for their integration into labor market at a later point, and could also infringe with their right to basic uh, public education. So just a brief comment, if there is time. Someone wants to respond to that? Jit? Like yeah, uh, the, the interesting question about the, uh, the, the girls with the hijab in France, um, I mean, for the most part, girls go to school, they just take it off once they walk into the schoolroom. And that's actually what the Muslim organizations have recommended because they have decided that it's better to keep girls in school. Um, but uh, a, a number of schools have been put in Catholic schools. So I think actually um, this is an unintended consequence, but in this case it's a positive one. Uh, I do not, um, I, the concept, of, the building a concept of, of, of uh, who we are, I don't, I, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, governance requires a, a degree of a community. The question is how you build it. Uh, and. Uh, there have been uh, one of the most common things uh, that uh, is, is being experienced in, in now uh, in, among young people is, uh, you know, the we becomes a question about eating to eating hot dogs. Uh, it's a, an incredibly silly and stupid thing, but again and again, this is how the acting out of such conflicts go on at the school level. You know, you can't be a, you can't be a real Dane unless you speak eat the hot dog, <laughs> and and there's, so there's this sort of dumbing down. I mean, kids will be kids, right? But there's a, so I think actually it's a better to have a sense about who we are. I happen to agree with this list about the exercise in Britishness. We ended up being warm beer. That was one of the key characteristics of, of being being uh, being uh, British. And the Dutch, you know, created this silly film that people have to sit through, where being topless in the park is what it means to be 
uh, to Comes be much done. closer, actually, than the one we are. <laughs> Come on. So, uh, you know, that's, that, that's a lot of silliness going on. And I don't think that's why... I, clearly, laws have to change. Uh, and in the process of changing laws, uh, silly things will be done. Uh, we won't get it right all the time, and then you will have to change things. So uh, in that process, it's much better to have uh, an open mind and go small, small steps. Well, at least you're smiling, so perhaps you... Well, no, I just wanted to comment word. because uh, the issue of, of the hijab did come up briefly, and this whole uh, highly charged question of, of Muslim dress, I think has to be understood as, as a response to quite a complicated situation. The case on the jilbab I referred to briefly, which ended up in the House of Lords and was eventually uh, uh, ruled in favor of the school, was actually about a Muslim group, a radical Muslim group, wanting to um, stop uh, Muslim girls wearing the shalwa kameez, which is the traditional <coughs> Pakistani dress. Um, and the point about shalwa kameez is that it's worn by both Sikhs and Muslims and uh, Hindus. Uh, it's not a, a religiously defined dress. So what you actually have is a, an element within the Muslim community, the extremists who um, uh, Yuta was talking about, who are trying to draw boundaries around the idea of Islam as distinct from the idea of being uh, South Asian. So we have that kind of conflict going on at the present time. But at the same time, what you do get is once people have got into, um, if you like, uh, a hijabi culture, which in a sense confers a certain sense of protectiveness against what's perceived as a hostile world, although of course it also um, can be read as being quite an aggressive, hostile statement, particularly if you've got the than a cab, which just shows the eyes and nothing else. But within that context, you get all sorts of changes. These may be unintended consequences, uh, certainly for the parents who perhaps allow these things to happen. One of them, uh, according to studies of uh, hijabis um, with regard to Egypt, but I think it probably applies in European Islam as well, is that it actually opens up the young women who are wearing these uh, costumes to um, uh, marriage partners from within the wider uh, Islamic community. So it may actually be an act of defiance against uh, parents who expect their daughters to marry uh, within the community. So it's a, quite, it's a way of kind of opening up uh, the field. I got the signal, our time is spent. I thank the panelists, I thank the audience, and I wish all of us a good evening.